In this video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step on how to create your first listing on Printify. I'll show you how to do everything you need to do, including trend research, checking trademarks, creating your design, making mock-ups, building your listing on Printify, and then optimizing it in Etsy before publishing it. If you want to create high converting listings that will increase your sales, be sure to stay till the end. We will begin with our trend research. I'll search a general keyword for a niche that I'm designing for. I'll do Christmas sweatshirt for moms. So I'll look through the first few pages here and see what listings are ranking and performing well. I'll ignore these ones that say add by Etsy seller because these are not ranking organically, they are being promoted. I really love this one here, I forgot to wrap it, he forgot to wrap it, very clever, and it's a very simple text-based design, and having group listings in your store is so valuable because instead of a customer just placing an order for one sweatshirt, they're always guaranteed to order more than just one. We'll see what else we have here. I really love this one, anti claws This is a very scalable one that you could do. So again, simple text-based design, but has a really nice looking font. Then the Christmas light elements and the Santa hat really make it stand out. But you could easily create a bunch of these by plugging in different titles. So Uncle Claus, Cousin Claus, Sister Claus, or whatever you want to do there. Here's another very simple one, but I'm sure it does well. Mama Claus with a very trendy and popular font. And then I love this one here. Again, very trendy, popular retro font, really nice elements, and a very popular color palette. So we'll click through on this listing and see how it is performing. So it has the bestseller badge, meaning it has a high sales volume over the past six months. It has over 20 people having it in their cart. And if we look at the reviews and we sort it by most recent, we have a couple recent reviews within the last week, so you know that this item is selling. And then the last thing I do to confirm that this is proven and performing well is I scroll to the bottom. And here you'll see it says listed on November 10th, so you know that this has sold today. And we know that because it has a bestseller badge, we know that it wasn't just listed today. And it also has almost 400 favorites, so you know people are engaging with it and they're loving it. So I think this is a great design to gain inspiration from and to go and create our own unique version of it. But before we go and create our design, we need to see if this phrase is trademarked. Every time before designing, we always check phrases. So an excellent tool to use for this is the tmsearch.uspto.gov and we'll use the basic word mark search. And now I will filter this by live and then we'll type in our phrase, holly jolly mama and we'll see that there are no records found, so we know that this phrase is safe to use. But because I'm creating my own unique version of this, I'm not going to use the exact phrase Holly Jolly Mama, I'm going to use Holly Jolly Nurse, so I'll double check and make sure that that isn't trademarked as well. Perfect, so we're safe to use this phrase Holly Jolly Nurse for both our design as well as our keywords and our title and our tags. But I do wanna show you what it would look like if there is a phrase that's trademarked. So I'll search Merry Christmas, so you'll see these ones that have registration numbers. If there's a registration number here, it means that the trademark has been approved and is active. But if there isn't one, it means it's been applied for, but it hasn't been approved yet. So that's something to look out for. So this phrase here, Merry Christmas from Heaven, has its registration number, so it's been approved, and the trademark is live. And we'll click through and see exactly what it's trademarked for. And it's specifically trademarked for jewelry, so technically we could use this for clothing. Now I wanna show you another example. For Meowy Christmas, again it has its registration number, so it's been applied for and approved, it's live, and if you click through on it, it is specifically trademarked for t-shirts, sweatshirts, baby bodysuits, and tank tops. So I would steer clear of this design since it's trademarked for clothing. I wouldn't use it for any designs or in any of my keywords in my title or my tags. You have to be extremely careful and cautious when you're creating new listings, making sure that you're not infringing on any trademarks. And my rule of thumb is if I question it at all, I will completely avoid it because there's so many different other phrases out there that I could use and make money with that are completely safe. Okay, we are now ready to begin creating our design. I'll be using Canva to create my design and my mockups. They have a free version as well as a paid version, and it's a great alternative to Photoshop or Illustrator, but Canva is extremely simple and straightforward and perfect for my needs. If you go up to the top right hand corner and select create a design, and then hit custom size. We like to make our canvas size 5000 by 5000, and we do that for all of our designs and I'll hit create new design. So we'll first need to create our text box. So if you go to the left hand side, you can select text and then hit add a text box. And now type in your phrase. So I'll do holly jolly nurse. 
And then to make your text box bigger, you can just grab the corner there and drag it out and I'll place it where I want it. You'll see they have that snapping feature so I know that my design is centered on my canvas. So now I want to edit the font style. So I can highlight all of my text and then hit this drop down menu and you have all of these different fonts you can choose from. If you have a specific one in mind, you can search it here. And another really cool feature is you can import your own fonts. So if you go down here to brand fonts, select this. So if there's a specific font that you want to use and Canva doesn't offer it, you can easily import your own fonts here. But for this example, I will be using the Blueberry font. And if you want to adjust the line height, you can do that as well. So just highlight your text. Then here, you can either do letter spacing, change it to wherever you want it, as well as the line spacing. And if there's only a certain part that you want to adjust, you can do that as well. So just highlight that. Now I'm ready to add color to my design. So I love using this tool, coolers.co. If I'm not pronouncing it right, you can let me know in the comment section down below. And this is a great way to find trending color palettes. So select explore trending palettes, and you can see all of the different options here. As well, you can search specific colors, topic styles, or hex values. So since this is Christmas themed, I'll search Christmas. And you also have the option to sort it by specific colors, styles, or topics. So now we'll scroll through these palettes and see if there are any that stand out to us. To be honest, I really like this one here. So all you have to do is select the color you want. So we'll start with red. You'll see it's copied to clipboard. We'll head back over to Canva. So I'm gonna have each individual letter colored. So I'll highlight H and then I'll select the color tool. Then over on the left hand side, select add a new color, and then I'll paste that hex code that I just copied. So if you're on Windows, you can hit Control V. If you're on Mac, you can hit Command V. There we go, easy as that. And I'll go back and grab my other colors now. Okay, I have my three colors that I wanna use. Now I need to edit the rest of the text. So all I have to do is highlight the letter, and then over on the left hand side, you'll see my document colors. I can select whatever color I want it to change to. I'll go ahead and finish doing that. Okay, the design is starting to come together. So now I want to add some elements. So I'm gonna swap out this letter O for a stethoscope. And if this happens, you can just grab the side and make your text box bigger and then reposition it. So now we'll add some elements. So on the left-hand side, if you select elements, you can search whatever element or graphic you're looking for. So I will search stethoscope heart, and you have a lot of different options to choose from. I really like this one here, so I'll go ahead and add that, and then I'll go ahead and resize it and put it where the O was. Okay, if you want to color your elements, you can do that as well. If you go up here, select color, and then you can change it to whatever color you want. So I will change this to red. And I also wanna add a little heart inside of the stethoscope. So I'll just search heart. This one looks good. Make it a little smaller. And then I'll place it inside just to fill in that white space. And just so you know, if you want to make very slight adjustments, you can use the arrows on your keypad to do so. All right, now I want to add a few more elements. So let's add some stars around this design. So I'll go ahead and search stars, see what options we have. A lot of different ones to choose from. I like these ones here. Make them a little smaller. And I'll place it next to the J here. Again, you're doing everything you can to make your design unique and to stand out on Etsy. And if you want to duplicate an element, you can just select duplicate and it'll copy paste it there for you. So now I want to flip these stars or mirror them. So I'll go up here and hit flip, flip horizontally, and then I'll duplicate this again. And there we go, looking pretty good. And another useful thing to know is if you want to move all of the elements within your canvas, you can highlight everything and that will select it all for you and then you can adjust it wherever you want it to be positioned. I wanna make sure it's completely centered on my canvas and you can easily create several different versions of this Holly Jolly Nurse design by swapping out the elements or changing the color of text or the font or crossing over into other niches and changing out this to say teacher or whatever niche it is that you're designing for. So be creative, work smart, and be as efficient as possible when it comes to designing. So now we're ready to export this design and download it to our computer you'll go up to the top right hand corner, select share, hit download, and then under file type, you wanna save this as a PNG, and then be sure to select transparent backgrounds so that there will be no background when you upload this design to Printify or Printful, whatever print provider you are using. 
and then you can hit download. Now we're ready to create our mockups and I highly recommend purchasing your mockups off of Etsy instead of using your print providers. They're higher quality, they look more professional, and they will increase conversion in your store. So on Etsy, you'll search the specific product that you are creating and whatever color it is that you're looking for. And you'll see there are a lot of different options to choose from and they are extremely affordable. So you're never gonna be spending more than I'd say $8 a mockup and it's a one-time purchase. You can use them as many times as you would like. It is a great investment and it's the best way to take your shop to the next level. So there are a few things I want you to be aware of when purchasing your mockups. The first thing is making sure that the focus is on the product itself and that the mockup isn't too busy with extra background elements. The next thing is making sure that the hair is out of the way from where you'd place the design. This will make it much easier and faster when you're creating your mockups. The third thing is making sure that your mockup is as flat as possible. You'll see this one has quite a few wrinkles in it and it will make it much more difficult for adding your design on it and it won't look as realistic. And then the fourth thing is just making sure that your mockup is not heavily filtered and that the product is true to color. Sometimes these mockup shops will edit their photos so much where it will completely change the color of the product itself. And I've heard sellers sharing experiences where their customer wasn't happy with the product because the color of the shirt looked much different than the listing photo. And we also have our own mock-up shop. Feel free to check it out. It's called Malama Mocks. The link will be in the description. Here's one of our listings for the Black Gildan 18,000. And we also have some great bundle discounts, so feel free to check those out to save money. So now we are ready to begin creating our mock-ups. I'll be doing this in Canva and I highly recommend creating templates for your mock-up. So you can create one project and add all the mock-ups that you'll use for that specific product. So you'll see here I have my Gildan mock-up template and my Bella Canvas 3001 template. And so anytime I want to create my mock-ups, I'll just come in here and I will duplicate the project. So I'll make a copy and then I will open that copy. And you'll see here I have the colors that I use the most often so I can easily add my design and it saves me so much time instead of having to manually import each mock-up every single time I'm doing my mock-ups. So we'll add our design now. We'll go over to the left-hand side and hit upload, then hit upload file and go and locate your design that you just created. And then I will select my design and that will drop it onto my mock-up. And then I'll go ahead and resize it and place it exactly where I want it. And something to keep in mind, and it's so important to do, is to make sure your mock-up matches your print file placement as closely as possible. That way when the customer receives their end product, it looks just like the listing photo but I'll go ahead and place this where I want it, making sure it's not too big or too small. And then another thing you can do to make this look more realistic is turn down the transparency on it. So up here in the top right hand corner, select transparency, and then I'll turn this down anywhere between 80 and 90, depending on the design and the mock-up that I'm using. I'll make the last final adjustments here. Again, you can use the arrows to place it exactly where you want it if you need to do slight adjustments. If you need to rotate your design, let's say the model is leaning to one side, you can rotate it here by dragging this and doing a slight rotation. And there we have it, looks pretty good. So now we wanna add this to the other colors. And since we have our template built already, we can easily just select our design, hit duplicate, and then drag that down to our next mockup. I'll add that to our sport gray. It looks pretty good. I'll duplicate it again and then drag it to my next mock-up. I don't think this design will go well with dark heather, so I will leave that blank and I'll just add it to my black mock-up. And on some of the colors, you will need to adjust the transparency again. So if you need to turn it down even more or increase it, you can. It's very situational depending on what colors you are offering. Another thing you can do is up here on the left-hand side, you can hit edit image and you can slightly adjust the brightness or turn the brightness down or adjust the contrast. But I recommend not altering that too much because you want it to be as similar to the actual design file. And again, just making sure it looks as realistic as possible. Once you have finished your mockups, we will now export these and download them to our computer. So again, go to the top right hand corner, select share and then hit download. I recommend saving these as JPEGs. And then here under select pages, you'll hit this drop down menu. Since we didn't use dark heather, I will deselect that. That way I'll only download my white, sport gray, and black mockup. And then you can select done and hit download. Now we are ready to add our design to Printify. 
So go to your store. You want to make sure first your store is connected. You can double check that by going over here on the top right hand corner. Hit this drop down arrow. If it's connected, it will say connected here with your store name. If it's not, you can select manage my stores and then you'll select add new store and then follow the necessary steps. It's very easy and straightforward to do. But since our store is already connected, we don't need to do that. We are ready to add our design. So you'll select catalog here and it'll drop down with all of the different products you can add. Since we're doing the Gildan 18,000, we will select sweatshirts under men's clothing and then specifically select Gildan 18,000. So the biggest difference between Printful and Printify is Printful is doing all of the fulfillment themselves and then Printify is working with several different suppliers. So within Printify, you will need to choose your specific print provider that you want to work with. And not all print providers are the same, so I highly recommend doing your research before choosing your print provider. And you'll see here in Printify, they'll give you an overall review score for that specific print provider. And if you select it, you'll see it's the overall performance for the last four weeks for quality, production speed, and stock reliability. They give you information on the location of the print provider, their base cost for this specific product, their shipping cost, their average production time, and this is for the last 30 days. And for print areas, you'll see Monster Digital prints on the front and back, but some of these different providers will actually do some sleeve prints. So here's an example, Print Your Cause does front, back, and they also print on the sleeves. So not all the print providers are the same, and you'll also notice that not all the print providers offer the same colors. So if you want more information on the print provider, you can select more details, and this will tell you about shipping, so where they ship to, the cost of shipping for the first item, and then for any additional items, and then they'll also give you information on their production process here. And as I mentioned before, you need to do your research before deciding on what print provider you use, but for me personally, I've had the most success with Monster Digital, as well as SwiftPod. So overall, I've had very little customer complaints, and I feel like their print quality is superior. And another thing to keep in mind when you're choosing your print provider is they don't all have the same print areas. So some will have a larger print area and some will have a smaller print area. And I'll show you an example. So for Monster Digital, if I select Start Designing and I scroll down here, you'll see their print area size is 4,500 by 5,100. But if I go back to SwiftPod, you'll see their print area is a little bit smaller. So it says 4,200 by 4,800. So not everyone has the same print area, so that's another thing to keep in consideration when deciding on your print provider. And just because you choose one print provider doesn't mean you have to stay with that print provider forever. You can always change when you want to. And sometimes there are situations when I will use multiple print providers. So for example, if Monster Digital is out of stock of a specific size and color, I will then go and fulfill that order with whoever has that item in stock. So for example today, I will be using Monster Digital, so I will select Start Designing. I'll go ahead and select my device. After I've imported my design, I will then add the colors that I want to offer. So up in the top right hand corner, I'll select Prices and Variants. And here I can choose what colors I want to have. So I will do White, Black, and Sport Gray. And then for sizing, I'll select size here. And for me personally, I don't offer all sizes. It's a total preference thing. It's up to you what you want to do, but I will offer 3XL, so I'll go ahead and deselect that and then hit update. And another really cool feature I love about Printify is you can easily add a design to a specific color. So let's say you've made a design specifically for white and a design specifically for black. You can do that here by selecting this here where it says make a specific design for white. That little blue dot will pop up next to the color. You'll go and delete your design and then add that design that is specifically created for your white sweatshirt. All right, so now let's talk about print placement. There's a few things to be aware of. The first thing is making sure that your design itself is in the print area. You'll see if you drag this up too high, it will go out of the print area or too low or to the side. And that means that it will only print what you see. The next thing is making sure that your resolution is at least minimum 300 DPI to ensure the best print quality. And then the next thing is making sure that the design isn't sitting too high in the print area or too low in the print area. And you also wanna make sure that your design is centered. So they have the center feature here over on the right hand side, just select center. And another thing to keep in consideration is making sure your design isn't so big 
that when your customer is wearing their shirt or sweatshirt and it wraps around their body, that you aren't able to see the sides of the design. And this is extremely critical when you have a single line text-based design because you'll only be able to read part of that design. So just a few things to keep in mind. So for bigger graphics like this, I like to place closer towards the top of the print area. But if it is a single line text-based design, I would most likely bring it down a little bit. But it's completely situational depending on the design. What I recommend doing is looking at one of your favorite graphic shirts, kind of get an idea of where they place it, and then do the same within Printify. But every design is going to be different, so you really just have to eyeball it and decide on what's best for that specific specific design. And then the last thing is I make sure my design is at least within the middle mark of the collar and the sleeve. But again, it's very situational depending on the type of design that you have created. Once I have my design placed where I want it, I will double check that it is centered and then I will use their preview feature. So up here in the top right hand corner, select preview, and this will give you a general idea of what it will print like. So they have a few flat lays you can look at, as well as some model mockups. And remember these are computer generated, so it's not going to be identical to this, but it will give you a general idea of how this will print. And if you need to make adjustments to the design and its placement, you can do so easily by just selecting edit. So these model mockups here are wearing size large to give you an idea what that will look like on a size large. For sizes 2XL and 3XL, they will not scale that design any bigger. But for most print providers, they will scale that design down for sizes medium and small. So that's something to keep in consideration when you are placing your design. But as I mentioned before, not all print providers will scale the design. So an easy way to check if your current print provider does it or not is by going back to edit here and you'll scroll down here and you'll see print area size is 4,500 by 5,100 and this is for size large. But if I go up here and edit my variants, I'll select just one color. So I have white, I'll hit this drop down arrow and then I will deselect all of the sizes other than size small and then I'll hit update. And now you'll see the print area size has dropped down to 3319 by 3769. And this print area size is four size small. So we know that Monster Digital will scale down the design for sizes medium and small. Okay, I'm happy with this placement. Our DPI is above 300 and our design is centered, we will now save our product. We are now ready to begin building out our listings. So we will first start out by doing our keyword research for our title. So what we'll do is we'll jump back over to Etsy and we will search a specific keyword for whatever niche we're designing in. So again, I will do Christmas sweatshirt for nurses and we will see what type of keywords are currently performing well on the first page. Again, I'll ignore these listings that say add by Etsy seller because they're not ranking organically and we'll see what some of these listings are doing. So Santa's favorite nurse, we'll select this listing and we'll see what type of keywords they are using and you never copy paste someone's title but you can pull keywords from a title and then create your own title. So Christmas nurse sweatshirt, that is a perfect one. I'll go ahead and copy that. And I'll add that to my title here. Remember the keywords at the beginning of the title are your most heavily weighted. So you want to use your most important targeted keywords in the beginning of your title. All right, let's look at some of our other options here. Nursing school shirt, not a bad idea. Nurse shirt and then nurse gift for women are great options as well. I'll probably change the order of this though. So instead of nurse gift for women, I will do gift for nurse. And then some other things to keep in mind when you are doing your keyword research is to not overcomplicate it. All you are trying to do is connect the buyer with your listing. So think like a buyer, what keywords would the customer type into the search bar looking for your specific listing? So I'll also think of some on my own, like cute sh shirt for nurses, funny nurse sweater. I'll do just nurse sweatshirt. So let's jump back over to Etsy and get some more ideas. I think for my last keyword idea, I'll just do nursing school shirt. And another thing to keep in mind is you are only allowed to have 140 characters for your title. Okay, so our title is good to go. Next up is adding our description. And here are some important details I would include in my description. So product details and sizing, shipping and production time, care instructions, Possibly you could have how to order. So for an older generation who aren't familiar with ordering on Etsy, you can break that down for them, make it extremely simple, as well as include feedback. So you could say something like, 
Before leaving any negative feedback, please reach out to us so we can make things right, as well as please message us if you have any questions. And then the last thing I would include is a clickable link. So you can say, check out more of our designs. And this is a great way to possibly upsell the customer and have them order more than one thing. And also to include links with related products in case that customer loses interest in that specific product that they initially clicked on, you could then send them to a different design in your store. Next up is adjusting our prices. And you can do it in bulk by selecting this box here and then hit edit price and then change your price to whatever you want your item to be priced at. And then I also recommend charging more for your 2XLs because they do cost more. So I'll go ahead and edit that. Okay, our prices look great. We will continue to move forward. So under product visibility in store, I highly recommend selecting this box, hide in store. That way when you publish your listing, it will be sent to your drafts on Etsy instead of your active listings. That way you're able to make any final last edits before making your listing active. Under variant visibility, there's three different options to choose from. I personally choose this one, the reason being because I like my variants to be marked as sold out when my print provider is out of stock. I know some people like this one, but I've had issues in the past where I wasn't able to find a specific color and size with any print provider. So I had to refund a lot of customers and I had a lot of upset customers and it caused a lot of headache and making a little bit of extra money isn't worth it to me to have the headache with customer service. But if you do select this one, you can then go and find a different print provider to fulfill that order who does have that variant in stock. And something to be aware of is Printify has a feature called order rerouting. And me personally, I don't like to have it enabled in my store, but I'll show you where you'll either turn that on or turn it off. So if you go back to your Printify dashboard, and you'll go up to the right hand corner and click on your shop name, and this will drop down and then select manage my stores. And then on your store name on the right hand side, select this gear icon where it says settings, and then select preferences on the left hand side. And here we'll explain everything you need to know about order routing and what it entails. But if you'd like to enable this in your store, just go ahead and check that on. But again, personally, I'm not a fan of it and I don't recommend having it enabled. And as I mentioned before, not all print providers are created equal and you could have one of your orders fulfilled with someone that doesn't do a great job. But that's a total preference thing. You decide what you want to do. So I'll select this one, show in stock variants as available and out of stock variants as sold out. Okay, we will continue on. And the last thing we have on this step is our shipping profiles. If you haven't already built out your shipping profiles on Etsy, I highly recommend doing it. And I'll walk you through step-by-step -step on exactly how to do that. But if you do have them built out, you can just deselect this and hit this drop down arrow and then choose whatever shipping profile you want. And now we'll go and set up our shipping profiles on Etsy. So I'll first save this as a draft and then jump over to my Etsy shop. And then on the left hand side, select settings and then select shipping settings and then select create profile. And now we can fill out this information. So under shipping prices, I will select, I'll enter fixed prices manually. Country or origin will be United States for me. And then here you will enter your print provider zip code, which I already have. If you don't know what your print provider zip code is, you can just message Printify's live chat and they'll be able to get that for you. And for your processing time, this is the time it takes for your print provider to fulfill your order. And with this, my motto is to always under promise and over deliver. That way I always have a little bit of a buffer in case something goes wrong in production and it takes longer than normal. So to find your processing times, you can go to printify.com slash network dash fulfillment dash status and then scroll down here to the bottom and then select your location. So I'm US based. And here we'll give you an estimate of the current production time for whatever print provider that you're using. So for this example today, since we're using Monster Digital, we'll see here that production is not affected and their average production time is two to five days. So for me personally, for my shipping profiles, I would probably do two to seven days. So I'll do a custom range and then I'll select two to seven days and that's business days. And that will just give me a few days extra of buffer. Okay, next up is where do we ship to? So we have the USA, the shipping service is USPS first class mail. And then to find this information, I would just do a simple Google search of my print provider's name and their shipping details. So just search Monster Digital Printify shipping details or whatever it is. And then here is a page on Printify with that information. If you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see what shipping providers they use. So they have USPS first class, 
And that's where I got that information from. So we have USPS first class mail, one to five business days, and what I will charge. It's up to you what you want to do, but I personally offer free shipping in my store. I personally, when I'm shopping, I like free shipping instead of having to pay extra for shipping. And Etsy even says they rank you better if you offer free shipping. But if you'd like to charge for shipping, you just select fixed price and then enter the amount that you want to charge for shipping. If I want to enter any amount, I would double check to see exactly what my print provider charges for shipping and then decide on what I will charge for shipping. And again, on that same page, you can access that information. So for sweatshirts and hoodies, for the USA, the first item costs $8 to ship. Any additional item costs $2. So I'd factor that into my shipping cost as I'm building out my shipping profile. And then I'll go ahead and delete everywhere else because I only want to ship within the USA. And then you can go and name your profile. So I will call this one sweatshirts. And this is more important if you are charging for shipping because the cost of shipping will be different for each product. So if you're charging for shipping, you could create a profile for sweatshirts and then a separate profile for t-shirts and whatever else it is that you're selling. And then go ahead and hit save profile. Now we will jump back over to Printify. So go ahead and select your title here and then scroll down to the bottom and under shipping profile, you can deselect this, hit this drop down arrow and select the profile that you just created on Etsy. Now that we have that all filled out, go ahead and select publish. Before we go and do our final edits on Etsy, I wanna show you a trick to streamline this process and to make things faster in the future when you're adding listings to Printify. So we're gonna go ahead and create a template out of this first listing that we made. So if you go to the right hand side, you can hit duplicate. And now we have a copy of this listing for our Guild and 18,000 sweatshirt. You can go ahead and hit edit and delete that existing design. And then I like to go and add a simple text-based design calling this template. So over on the right hand side, hit custom text. Then I'll type in template. And then if there are specific colors that you always sell, you can add those specific colors as well as those sizes before saving this. So this looks good. We'll hit save product. And then I will go ahead and name this my Gildan 18,000 template. And then your description will already be added from the previous listing that we created. You have your prices saved already. And all of your settings should be there that we set up on that first listing. So then go ahead and we will save this as a draft. And now we have our Gildan 18,000 template. So the next time we want to add a listing, instead of doing it completely from scratch, we can just come here to our product section and then search Gildan 18,000 template. That will come up. And then all you have to do is hit duplicate and then go and add your new design and it will be extremely streamlined and will save you so much time. And I would go and do the exact same thing for any product that you are selling. So I have one for my sweatshirts and for my t-shirts. Okay, we are now ready for the final steps on Etsy. So we'll jump over to our Etsy shop. We'll select listings. And remember, we hid that listing in our store so it will be saved under drafts. And here's our listing that we created. We'll go ahead and click into it. And now we're ready to make the final edits to this listing. So go ahead and delete all of your print providers mockups. And now we need to add those mockups that we created in Canva. So go ahead and select add a photo and import those mockups that you created. And another quick tip for importing photos, you can select all of them at the same time and it'll bring them all in. You don't have to do them individually one at a time. I also recommend including photos with your shipping and processing times, a size chart, and any other information that you would want your customer to know. Because from what I've learned over the past few years of selling on Etsy is customers don't really read your description. They're more likely to see the information that's in your listing photos. We can now adjust our thumbnail. So I always recommend zooming in on your design. You want that to be the main focus in search results. That looks pretty good to me. I'll go ahead and hit save and we'll continue to scroll down. Under about this listing, you need to select another company or person, a finished product and it's made to order. Category sweatshirts that auto fill for us. And then the next thing here is under occasion or holiday, I highly recommend adding these if it is applicable. So for this example that we're doing today under holiday, I would add Christmas and this adds just another way for customers to be able to find you. 
Next to renewal options, it's up to you what you'd like to do, but I personally choose manual. If you select automatic, your listing will renew every four months if it hasn't sold yet. But I like to have it set to manual, that way I'm able to reevaluate and see what I need to change about my listing if it isn't performing well. Whether it's changing my mock-up photos, the SEO, or if it's just a design that isn't that great, I could possibly improve the design, or I could just scrap the listing in whole. So next, under type, it's a physical product. We already have our description here and then next to production partners you are required to fill this out so for production partner we will do printify and then show this production partner's name to buyers I will just deselect this and then descriptive title so this is what will appear to your customers so I'll just do a print shop and for the location monster digital is based out of Florida so I'll go ahead and add that and it's up to you what you'd like to put here but just have a simple explanation explaining the role of your production partner Okay, next up is about your partnership. So this one we will select, I don't have the technical ability or equipment to make it entirely by myself. And what is your role in the design process? I design everything myself. What is the partner's role in the production process? They do everything for me. Now that we have that all filled out, we will go ahead and hit save. And that will automatically save, so in the future you won't need to fill that information out again. All that you'll need to do is select the box here. If you have your sections built out already, I highly recommend adding your listing to your section for whatever it's related to. This is a great way to make the shopping experience better for customers, and it makes it easier for them to find specific listings depending on what they're looking for. And now we need to add our tags. So what I like to do is copy and paste my title into my tags, and then I'll go ahead and select add, these ones that say you can't enter more than 20 characters, what I will do is break it up. So I'll just do Christmas nurse, and then I'll do a comma, sweatshirt, and that will still read as Christmas nurse sweatshirt. And for cute shirt for nurses, I'll do cute shirt, and then four nurses. So again, that will read cute shirt for nurses. And then I have four tags left. You're allowed to have 13 tags total, and I highly recommend using all of your tags. Okay, after you've added all 13 tags, you are good to continue on. Under variations, I like to double check everything, make sure the sizes are correct, the color, as well as the price. And then for the quantity here, the max you're allowed to add is 999. And as you can see, that number automatically gets added from Printify. The next thing I wanna do in variations is link my photos. So I'll select link photos here in the top right hand corner. And then under variation type, I will choose color. And then I will select the color and match it with its corresponding mockup photo. So sport gray, there you go white, and then black. And now when a customer is checking out and they select a specific color, the corresponding listing photo will change. We'll continue on. I'll leave personalization turned off. And then next to shipping, select your corresponding shipping profile. We'll continue to scroll down. Returns and exchanges. Here I recommend selecting apply. I don't offer returns or exchanges, but if there's a problem, I allow my customer to reach out. And doing this protects me from any customer taking advantage of me. And then under marketing, you can choose if you wanna market this listing or not, but I'll select maybe later. And then we are good to go. We have all the information filled out. Before I publish this listing, I like to preview it. So I'll go ahead and select preview. And this is common to happen where you get this error even though you have all the correct information filled out. So just ignore it and then select preview again. And now we're able to get an idea of what our listing looks like. And if everything looks great to you, you can go ahead and select publish. And it will notify you that you will be charged a non-refundable fee of 20 cents. If you'd like to view your listing, go ahead and select view your listing. And there you go, you have created your first listing. Because you watched this video, I think you'll like this one. I teach you six simple ingredients on how to get your first 100 sales on Etsy. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.